All right, guys. So coming to the final part, and that is the standard deviation for theory. And then we are all set to begin. So standard deviation. What do you mean by standard deviation? The name clearly tells us that it has something to do with the deviation. Deviation from where? So we are looking for the deviation from the mean. How far the elements of the set are deviated from the mean? That is our major concern. For example, if I have a set, let us take a simple set. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, if I calculate the mean of this set, you know how to calculate the mean. That is the sum of the numbers, which is 15 in this case, upon number of elements. So the mean is 3. Now, few of the numbers of the set are deviated from the mean. Deviated means far from the mean. So now we need to calculate that standard deviation. What can be given to each and every element, the standard assigned deviation of this particular set. Let's have a look how to calculate it. So quickly write down the mean. How many times the number of elements you have? So I have five elements. I'm writing it five times. Now, once written with the mean, write down your elements. I'm just using a short form for the elements, ELE. I have one, two, three, four, and five. Deviation from the mean, how far you are from the mean. So that is simple, the mean minus the element. Or you can also say the element minus the mean doesn't matter. Ultimately, we will square it up. So it's up to you, whatever you want to take. Element minus mean or mean minus element. So 3 minus 1 is 2, 3 minus 2 is 1, 0, minus 1, and now you have minus 2. Now, do not make a mistake of adding all these deviations. You will again come back to 0 because this impact of 2 and minus 2 will cancel out. But that's not what we want. Ultimately, both are deviated from the mean. Their impact has to be added, not subtracted. So eliminate this discrepancy. How? Simply square it up. If I square it up, every of this deviation impact would be added, even if you are negative or you are positive. So simply square them up. 4, 1, 0, 1, and 4. Now these are the deviations, but they are the square of the deviations. Add them up. I'll get 10. Now, I have the sum of the deviations but I'm looking for the standard deviation. So what is the deviation square per element? Be careful, we have squared up. So we are right now calculating the deviation square. So deviation square per element becomes 10 by five, that is equals to two. This is called as variance. This is also an important term you should remember. So variance equals to two given by sigma square. So it's not the deviation, it is the square of the deviation per element. All right, I'm repeating variance is square of the deviation per element. Now, what is the standard deviation? It is simple. Since you square it up, take the square root again, and that is square root of 2, which is 1.414. That is your standard deviation given by sigma. It can be also said that standard deviation is square root of variance. So have a look at it again, pause the video and watch carefully. I'll repeat it once for you. Write down the set. First step, calculate the mean. Easy, you know it. Second step, write down the means and the elements. Subtract them up. So 3 minus 1, 2. 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2. Second step done. Third step, square the difference so that the impacts get added. You get a 10. But this was the deviation square for five elements. We are looking for each specific element. So now you divide it by the number of elements. And we get 10 by 5, that's 2. This particular thing which you have calculated is nothing but the variance. Variance square of deviation per element. What is standard deviation? Square root of the variance. So root two, that's 1.414.
that is the standard deviation for you in four steps you will be there with your standard deviation i hope it is quite clear that is it for the theory part all right one more important scenario to visualize what actually is standard deviation and then we are done with the basics and we'll move for the questions all right guys if you want to write it down pause i am moving ahead let us say i have a set 1 2 3 4 and 5 i have another set 2 2 3 4 and 4 and i have another set 3 3 3 3 and 3 guys if you calculate the mean for all these three sets this is 3 3 and 3 now which set is more deviated or which set has the numbers which are far from mean clearly this is the set where the numbers are more widely spread from the mean so this will have the highest standard deviation definitely this will be greater than the standard deviation of 2 because the numbers are less spread what was the deviation the deviation was simply how far you are deviated from the mean so if your numbers are far away from the mean higher the standard deviation and then you have this as standard deviation 3 here all the numbers are exactly at mean so guys what would be the standard deviation over here can you guess yes it's going to be zero because you have no deviation and clearly when you will do number minus mean number minus mean each you will get zero now you square it up or do whatever you will get the answer as zero so there are two very important things to note one that more widespread the numbers more widely spread the numbers higher the standard deviation i am using the symbol sigma for standard deviation secondly if all elements of set are same equal then standard deviation equals to 0 and this is the only case this is the only case when your standard deviation is 0 so this is a very important point if the question tells me that the standard deviation is equals to 0 that means guys that all the numbers of the set are equal i repeat if the standard deviation of the set is equals to 0 then all the numbers of the set are equal not 0 they can all be 3 like in this case all be 4 all be 5 all be 7 whatever third standard deviation can never be negative can never be negative thing guys standard deviation was square root of variance and square root is always positive you know that very well that means standard deviation can never be negative and it does not make any sense as well if you are deviated you will get a positive standard deviation if you are not deviated at all like in this case you will get the answer as zero so negative standard deviation does not make any sense so standard deviation is either zero when all the numbers are same or it is positive if even one number is different okay even if i have a set like this 2 3 3 3 3 3 since 2 is not equals to 3 one of the number is different standard deviation is not equals to 0 so standard deviation in this case will also be greater than 0 but as soon as you get rid of this 2 and now you have all the 3s all the numbers become same and now standard deviation will become equals to 0 make it have no chance you square them up things become positive and then you are taking the square root guys so that is the most important area for the standard deviation now you are concretized with the basic concepts and i hope you are enjoying our series continue 
and now we'll practice some basic questions and then advanced questions and set the tone for all the statistics questions for GMAT. Goodbye. Please like and share. It helps us or it boosts us to create more such beautiful content for you guys. And you can learn sitting in your home. Thank you. Bye-bye.